I am Mike Ford, Chair of the Gerald R. Ford Presidential Foundation. I'm delighted to be with our medal recipient, Senator Elizabeth Dole and Roger Porter, who is a trustee of the Foundation Board, as well as co-chair of the awards committee that nominated Senator Dole and her husband, Senator Bob Dole, for this award. We are here to recognize Senator Dole and her husband's tremendous service to our nation. Roger, I will turn the program over to you to describe the qualities and achievements that set Elizabeth and Robert Dole apart to make them worthy to receive our 2022 Gerald R. Ford Medal for Distinguished Public Service. Thank you. Well, awarding the Gerald R. Ford Medal for Distinguished Public Service to two individuals is not the norm. This year's award of the medal to Robert and Elizabeth Dole is, however, an understandable and appropriate exception. Interestingly, they began in different regions of the country and with very different backgrounds. Happily, their lives became inextricably bound together in a wonderful way. We live in a land of freedom which provides great latitude to its citizens to choose the path they will follow and to chart their destiny. Let's turn first to Senator Robert Dole. Born in Russell, Kansas, Bob Dole was a product of the nation's heartland. A multi-sport athlete in high school, Dole had visions of a collegiate athletic career and then becoming a surgeon. Like others, his family made it through the depression with few of the comforts of life, but with drive and determination without a trace of self-pity. He enlisted in the Army in World War II, and near the end of the conflict in Europe, he was wounded in Italy, seeking to assist a fellow wounded soldier. Initially left for dead, he was eventually transported to a medical facility, the first of many where he would spend the next three years. He never fully recovered from those wounds, eventually use, losing the use of his right arm. During his political career, he championed the rights and the needs of the disabled and of those who had served honorably. The title that meant most to him was veteran. A vice presidential candidate with Gerald R. Ford in 1976 and a three-time presidential aspirant in 1980, 88, and 96, it was in the Congress that he left his mark. U.S. representatives and senators inevitably face competing responsibilities. One involves attending to the particular interests of the voters from one's district or state. The other involves responding to the general interest, what is best for the country as a whole. Bob Dole balanced this tension as well as any of his contemporaries. He never forgot his fellow Kansans, including the farmers and small business owners whom he knew well. He was formidable in shaping the details of agriculture legislation the constituency service his office provided. Kansans was among the best of his peers in the House, where he served for eight years, and in the Senate, where he served for nearly 28 years. He never forgot where he came from. In 1975, he married Elizabeth Hanford Dole, and the two of them maintained a remarkable partnership for nearly half a century. They had much in common. Both eventually served in the Senate, although not simultaneously. Both ran for president, again, not simultaneously. Both devoted their life to public service. Both relied on their faith and unflagging determination. They supported rather than competed with one another in their careers. Elizabeth Hanford Dole's roots were anchored in Salisbury, North Carolina, where she excelled academically and demonstrated early, a brand of leadership that was grounded in blazing trails and leading by example. At Duke University, she studied political science, graduated with distinction as a member of Phi Beta Kappa, and was elected student body president. She saw a place for women in the ranks of those who would lead our country and build a land of which we could be proud. Her healthy ambition, without a trace of arrogance, focused on getting things done rather than accumulating awards and recognition. Her ambition took her to Harvard where she earned graduate degrees in education and law, 
one of only 25 women in her law school class of 500. Public service beckoned, first at the Department of Health Education and Welfare, and then in the White House, where she served as deputy to the Special Assistant for Consumer Affairs during the Nixon administration. In 1983, she became the first woman to be appointed the U.S. Secretary of Transportation, serving for five years. And she later served as Secretary of Labor, where her top priorities included workplace safety, resolving a bitter 11-month coal strike, and launching initiatives to help at-risk youth. As Secretary of Transportation, she worked with the late Senators Lautenberg and Luger to ensure enactment of the 21-year-old age drinking limit. At virtually the same time, she issued a landmark regulation, which is credited with widespread enactment of the first state safety belt laws and airbags in cars. These three actions have saved nearly a half a million lives to date, with a projected 20,000 lives saved per year. But it was not just as the first woman to serve as a cabinet secretary under two different presidents. Elizabeth also left her mark on the nonprofit sector. She was only the second woman to serve as president since Clara Barton founded the American Red Cross in 1881. She returned to the political arena in 2002 and became the first woman elected to represent North Carolina in the United States Senate. In 2012, she founded Caring for Military Families, the Elizabeth Dole Foundation, to raise awareness and support for the five and a half million young spouses, mothers, fathers, and other loved ones caring for our nation's wounded warriors at home. Rarely has this award recognized anyone as versatile as Elizabeth Dole, whether elected or appointed, executive or legislative, leading a venerable nonprofit organization or creating one herself. She has transformed for good everything to which she has set her hand. She has led a life of kindness and purpose, devoting her days from beginning to end in public service. Today, we recognize two remarkable Americans, Bob and Elizabeth Dole, who have engaged in the challenging work of doing good and serving others throughout their long and dedicated lives. Mike is a representative of the Ford family and a former and the chair of the foundation. Would you please do the honors in presenting the Gerald R. Ford Medal for Distinguished Public Service to Senator Dole. Thank you, Roger, for those wonderful tributes to Senators Bob and Elizabeth Dole. As I reflect on our family's uh, close relationship with, with those two giants in our uh, public uh, service, my father and Senator Bob Dole shared a special relationship as Midwesterners, World War II veterans, congressional leaders, and presidential running mates in 1976. Senator Elizabeth Dole, while you and my father did not serve together in Congress, you both shared the same values, an optimistic view of the world, and your sense of duty and responsibility as American citizen leaders including an enlightened and moderate political philosophy, a belief in the dignity of all people and respect for every person, a personal commitment to integrity, decency, and compassion, and a call to active civic engagement and public service for the greater good. Your personal and professional life has reflected the highest ideals and values of our great republic. And as a longtime resident of North Carolina, personally, I want to thank you for your exemplary leadership and service as our U.S. Senator. Though different in style and approach, you and Bob each have made a profound and lasting impact on the overall welfare of our nation, collectively, as well as on countless individual lives ever grateful for your 
friendship and partnership and serving our country and its people, my parents would be thrilled for you and Bob to receive the Ford Medal for Distinguished Public Service. So it is very fitting for us to, as a foundation, to bestow this award on both you, Senators Robert and Elizabeth Dole, if you'll join me. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Beautiful. We are so thrilled to have you and, and Bob as this year's recipient. Thank you. My heartfelt thanks to you, Michael and Roger, and to the entire Board of Trustees for the award you've bestowed on the Doles. To receive an award bearing the name of a leader who I greatly admired is an honor I'll always cherish. The Gerald R. Ford Medal for Distinguished Public Service is especially meaningful because I share it with Bob Dole, the man who was my soulmate and my own personal Rock of Gibraltar for 46 years. Indeed, it was only eight months after our wedding when the phone rang in our hotel room in Kansas City where we were attending the 1976 Republican National Convention. It was President Ford calling to ask Bob if he would be his running mate. The events of those next few days are emblazoned in my memory as clearly as if they occurred yesterday. President Ford had decided that the very next morning, after their acceptance speeches, he and Bob would launch their campaign in Bob's hometown, Russell, Kansas. The logistics of mounting a presidential visit on 24 hours notice are daunting indeed, but somehow it all came together. There were 10,000 people packed tightly on the courthouse lawn that sun-baked August day. Years earlier, when Bob was wounded at the end of World War II, many of these same friends and neighbors had put money in a little cigar box at Dawson's Drugstore to help pay for his medical care. As Bob looked out at that crowd, tears welled up in his eyes and his voice shook a little. I was sitting 10 feet away and instinctively wanted to go to his side. President Ford, sensing what was about to happen, quietly shook his head. He then rose to his feet, leading 10,000 people in a spontaneous ovation. Throughout a campaign, where they came back from a 33-point deficit to an eyelash away from victory. And throughout the many years that followed, Bob and I treasured our strong connection and the warmth of our friendship with Gerald Ford. Bob believed, as do I, that the late speaker Tip O'Neill was absolutely correct when he wrote, God has been good to America, especially during difficult times. At the time of the Civil War, he gave us Abraham Lincoln, and at the time of Watergate, he gave us Gerald Ford, the right man at the right time, who was able to put our nation back together again. President Ford and Bob Dole shared a great deal in common. Both were born in the Midwest and raised with Midwestern values of hard work, common sense, honesty, and love of country. Both willingly served their country in World War II, as Michael mentioned, both returned from the war to dedicate their lives to public service. Both would serve as leaders of their party on Capitol Hill, President Ford in the House and Bob in the Senate. And both would earn bipartisan reputations as effective leaders of character and integrity, leaders whose word was their bond, leaders who understood the value of compromise and who were willing to put what was in the country's best interest above what might have been in their best political interest. In accepting the John F. Kennedy Profile and Courage Award in 2001, President Ford eloquently expressed his philosophy with these words, as far as I'm concerned, there are no enemies in politics, just temporary opponents who might vote with you on the next roll call. May all those who want to make a positive difference in the lives of others through public service remember those words, and may they always remember the life and legacy of Gerald Ford and Bob Dole.